We have discussed our motion along twisting Birkeland currents both on this channel and on the Thunderbolts. We speculated that the idea of the Nemesis star and its 26 million year extinction cycle may be linked to our motion around the Pleiades. In a new study just published, scientists have examined the frequency of extinction events in land animals and found that it coincides with reported mass extinctions of ocean life and points to a cycle of between 26 and 27 million years. Let's examine why this might be a very important finding. Paleontologists recognize five mass extinction events in fossil records. The first occurred some 443 million years ago, and an estimated 86% of all marine species disappeared. This was followed by the extinction event in the Devonian period some 360 million years ago, which caused 75% of all species to go extinct. Then, 250 million years ago, in the Permian, the worst extinction event occurred, which wiped out 96% of all species. In the Triassic period, some 201 million years ago, 80% of all species disappeared from the fossil record. The final one occurred during the Cretaceous period, some 65 million years ago. Here, 76% of all species went extinct, including the dinosaurs. In between these events, smaller scale extinctions occurred as well. The authors of this paper examined the record of mass extinctions of land-dwelling animals and concluded that they coincided with the extinction of ocean life. They identified that this seemed to follow a similar pattern and had a cycle that seemed to repeat every 26 to 27 million years. These new findings of coinciding sudden mass extinctions on land and in the oceans lend credence to the idea of a periodic global catastrophic events as the trigger for extinctions. So what is the current consensus on what might cause this repeating cycle? Number one, the Nemesis hypothesis. Here the sun would have a companion star which would either be a red dwarf or a brown dwarf star. This would be orbiting the sun at a considerable distance, possibly around 1.5 light years away and would have a very high eccentric orbit. And this would mean that on its closest approach, it would disturb comets in the Oort cloud and cause them to fall in towards the inner solar system. To date, they have identified over 1800 brown dwarf stars. At this point, it would appear that there are fewer brown dwarfs in our local neighborhood than anywhere else. Possibly as low as one brown dwarf star for every six stars. The majority of stars in this group also appear to be single stars, not double or triple stars. Using the newer and more powerful WISE survey telescope, which can detect cool brown dwarfs up to a distance of 10 light years, they have not been able to detect anything that could be our nemesis star. One additional problem is that due to the size of the orbit and eccentricity, it should easily become perturbed by the proximity of the galaxy or nearby stars. And this would mean that the periodicity would vary greatly, and this is not reflected in the extinction records. The Shiva Hypothesis This hypothesis suggests that gravitational disturbances caused by the solar system crossing the plane of the Milky Way are enough to disturb comets in the Oort cloud surrounding the solar system. This is caused by the motion of the Sun around the galactic centre. A tilt in our offset would cause the Sun to move up and down through the galactic plane. The problem is that the estimation of our speed around the galactic centre varies and would put this crossing at about every 30 million years. Flood basalt eruptions. In the recent paper, scientists propose another alternative beyond the asteroid impact. All eight of the studied mass die-offs on land and in the ocean match times of flood basalt eruptions. These can release toxic gases into the atmosphere. This could have resulted in environmental collapse leading to mass extinctions. So what are the alternatives? I have previously talked about Jim Weninger's idea of using the motion of our local stars to show that we are moving in a twisting motion around the star Arcturus. This motion is probably caused by our movement along the twisting stellar Birkeland currents. We also saw that as we wrap around Arcturus, 
this larger structure itself might be wrapped around the Pleiades. At this point, it is important to remember that we sit on the edge of a structure called the local chimney. At the center of this sits the Pleiades. Could a pinching effect have caused this structure to form and created the Pleiades stars at the center? Further out, we also find the Ghoul Belt, which is a circular ring of very bright blue stars, whose center is once more the Pleiades. If we examine the Pleiades from Earth, we see that it has a small proper motion. If we examine this motion and extrapolate this onto a circular path, we find that it would take around 26.5 million years to complete one orbit. But what could cause these extinction events then? I think part of the clue is in the fact that some of these events are indeed related to what they term as impact events, and also the fact that we see massive flood basalt eruptions. The 26 to 27 million year extinction cycle and the fact that the orbit is 26.5 million years implies that at a specific point in this orbit, conditions change to cause a mass extinction. So what could change? Is it possible that on one side of the orbit we end up much closer to a stronger magnetic field created by another, larger stellar Birkeland current? Could this then induce large currents through our local Birkeland currents? This could then potentially cause a greater stressing in the star, causing a nova style event, or potentially it could cause stressing in the planets as well. And this may be the cause for what we see as the flood basalt eruptions. Is there a link between these events and sudden expansions? Now while Thornhill thinks that the giant planets in our solar system are captured brown dwarfs, the question remains where they originated from, and how were they free to float around? The brown dwarfs occupy the outer shell of Birkeland currents, where the current density is much lower. Is there part of our greater motion around the Pleiades where our Birkeland current squeezes this much closer together? and therefore could cause brown dwarfs to be ejected from one stream into another. There are many questions that this throws up. There are many ancient references and links to the Pleiades and Arcturus, which seem to be connected to this concept, and this is something that I plan on covering in the near future. Now before you start to panic that the next event is imminent, the most recent event was 11 million years ago, so we do have some time to try and work this out. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.